Voroshilovgrad was named for long-time military and political leader Clement Voroshilov. It is an undistinguished industrial city in the Ukraine, a manufacturing center that foreign tourists virtually never visit. But it has its circus building and its circus hotel. And for a few weeks this bitter cold spring, it has a graduate of the Moscow Circus School who is one of the world's most famous living clowns, Oleg Popov. Popov's childhood was difficult. His father died in 1942, and Popov says he was half starved during the war years. At a memorial near Varashilovgrad, he pays tribute to the millions of Soviet citizens who lost their lives in World War II. The Russians call it the Great Patriotic War. Its memory is still kept very much alive in their hearts and minds. In the years since that cataclysmic event, Popov's life has changed dramatically. As a youth, he went in for sports, worked in the Pravda press room, and hung around the Moscow Circus School. In 1946, the school accepted him as a student. He made his professional debut at age 19 as a slack rope walker and juggler. He got his break in the best show business tradition. A clown became ill, and Popov went on for him. His inventive nonsense and many talents quickly propelled him to stardom. Soon he was performing abroad. Newsweek wrote of one American appearance, the great Popov put the whole show into orbit. After nearly 40 years in the ring, he still travels the world, practices daily, and performs six nights a week, plus three matinees. He says, a clown's life is his art. In the exhilarating atmosphere of the arena, Popov is constantly innovating and perfecting. Yet he always makes time to share his expertise with a new generation of performers. А что если четыре человек хуже? Много очень. Много, да? Нет, у них будет меньше этих э, обручей. Это по 10 штук. Да. Сегодня в цирке радостные встречи с любимым нашим волном страны. Both credits the work of Charlie Chaplin as his inspiration. Without elaborate makeup, he creates a character who is, he says, a simple, happy chap, perhaps a bit soft-hearted and lyrical. Ever the professional, he never stops warming up. began his career, showcasing his talents as a juggler and slack wire artist. As with all great performers, part of Popov's artistry is in making the difficult seem effortless. Of his stage persona, he says, 
I decided I would be Ivan the Fool, who in the end is no fool at all. At the same time, I would be a man of today, with a good dose of cunning, mischief and joy. The image would be understandable to the working man. As the show progresses, the roustabouts continually remove and set up props in the single ring. During these transitions, the clowns amuse and distract the audience. So Popov may appear 10 or 12 times in a single performance. He still builds his own props and trains his performing animals. In this sketch, the clever dog outsmarts itself and passes out from too much picnic wine. At intermission, Popov joins the audience in the foyer for a personal appearance, delighting young fans as he may have once thrilled their parents. His humble identification with the masses and his importance as an ambassador of goodwill abroad have rewarded Popov with benefits enjoyed by few Russians. A salary, several times that of the ordinary performer, and some living quarters in Moscow, and one of the country houses permitted only to the Soviet elite. <laughs> Married to a performer, father of a retired performer, Popov could have retired years ago, but he prefers to keep working. What happens, he says, is that a fine speck of sawdust enters your bloodstream. Once you are infected, it is for life. Popov has been called a genius of the art of whimsy. In one of his favorite sketches, he and his assistant touch on everyone's experience to create laughter from pain and fear. Popov's inspired clowning has earned him one of his country's highest awards, People's Artist of the USSR. But it is the work itself on which he thrives. Without jokes, he says, it would be impossible to live in this world. <laughs> 